All right, thank you very much. Um, it's an honor to be here, to be able to present today and really enjoy the talk so far. Um, so, so my name is Martin, uh, I have with me Rui, uh, and we're gonna talk about how we think robots can help uh, raspberry growers remain competitive. Um, just to say that this has been done in collaboration with Bosch, with the Summerberry Company, the University of Plymouth and the Western Norway University of Applied Sciences, where I'm also an associate professor. So um, for anyone that's paid attention to the news over the last, say, five, six years, it's been pretty hard to avoid hearing about um, difficult situations of farmers and particular uh, fruit and berry growers. Um, so news such as British fruit left the rot uh, as looming Brexit squeezes seasonal labor. This was back in 2017. All point to the difficulties that growers have had um, um, for, for actually for quite a long time. And, and Brexit was just kind of the, the, the tip of the iceberg in this sense. This type of news kept coming. It keeps coming every summer. Um, and to be honest, it's, it's a lot about a lot more than, than, than what these, this, the newspaper articles decide to focus on. Uh, it's about, for example, COVID. We've just been through a worldwide pandemic where people have had real difficulty in crossing borders. You can imagine what that does to a grower that needs manual labor to do most of uh, the tasks. Um, but also the drought we've seen this, this summer in the UK, um, really, really difficult situations for growers. Um, so why is that? Well, they, they, they have really thin margins. They depend on manual labor uh, for, for a lot of tasks. And if you look at something like the, the harvesting of the crops, um, which is manual, it accounts often for more than half of their total costs. So they're really, um, they, they have a high risk and they're really uh, sensitive to any changes in, in exchange rates. If you look at the pound today, um, um, to the changes in the political climate, you see what's happening in Ukraine, um, etc. cetera. So there's, there's, there's a lot of risk there. And when you talk to some of these growers, they, they say they kind of face, okay, this is really difficult. We either have to, you know, move our production somewhere else, somewhere we can get labor, um, or we need this automated. Um, unfortunately, automating something like picking of raspberries is, is really difficult. Um, and what we try to do in, in fieldwork robotics is, is really closing the loop and making it a robotic operation. Um, and by the way, the, if even today, uh, news just out, so up to 60, million pounds of UK crops left the rot owing to um, lack of labor. Um, and by the way, 22 million pounds of that was, was fruit and berries. Um, and this is also an issue in the US, in, in Australia, etc. So it's not just something we see in the UK, it's something we see across the globe. So how do we try to deal with this? Um, we've uh, tried to develop a system um, that can selectively uh, harvest raspberries. What does that mean? We need to first be able to grade the raspberries and say, is this ready uh, to be harvested? We then need to gently harvest or pluck it. We can't really cut the stem and we need to really pluck it. Uh, and then we need to place it into punnets, as, um, sorted and ready to be shipped to the supermarkets without being uh, handled anymore so that we, we don't get any blemishes on the product. And also we try to do this in a, in a platform that is as modular as possible. Because you can imagine that the season is limited and we want the robot to do as much as possible for the time that it has uh, available. We want to maximize utilization. So we really focus a lot on modularity to be able to take off the gripper, put on another one and do another crop or do another task. Um, this picture um, is from uh, Portugal um, and we've been um, we're really proud that since uh, February this year, we've had a, a robot in operation in Portugal, where we are now picking raspberries um, and, and actually being able to, to sell them to supermarket. Um, this is at the site of the Summerberry Company, a large UK producer that supplies uh, a lot of the big super UK supermarkets. They have more than uh, 100 hectares in, in Portugal. And they have another cool feature. In Portugal, uh, they're able to pick or harvest uh, raspberries almost year round. This is really beneficial to us. Um, so, Human picked uh, raspberries, robot picked raspberries. This is the picture of, of the first raspberries that we were able to, to sell. Um, with that, I will leave the word to Rui, who's going to tell a bit more about how we got there and what the impact is for farmers. The problem is not just the UK. Uh, we are seeing exactly the same trends across the world. So we were speaking with Morocco growers and they were saying, well, 
Uh, it's very cheap. It costs one third of the UK, but we can't find them. So in the end of the day, the problem is still there. Um, also speaking with a Portuguese grower last week, he was saying, listen, I need to hire 200 harvesters in a week. I don't know how I'm going to be able to do it because I can't find them. So it, it's a big problem. Also, if you look into this picture, one of the things you can see is on the right-hand side, you see more fruit than on the left-hand side. It happens that we put exactly the amount of fruit needed for a punnet. So as of today, humans harvest, they put uh, 200 grams in a 150 gram punnet, then it needs to go to the sorting center. The fruit is touched more than once, uh, which means for a, a short shelf life fruit, um, you increase the probability of having um, either yeast, mold, or bruising the fruit um, in the crop. So what we are trying to do, uh, we are trying to enable growers to remain competitive. Uh, one, of, one grower was basically in panic from the 80 hectares, you only managed to harvest 10. So if you are a business, you can't carry on like this for a long time. So we are not only talking about the survivability of the growers, but also what the impact this will have in our food on the long term. And people love berries. The UK is one of the biggest consumer of berries. It needs to import from other countries. And a lot of the growers are expanding outside of the UK as well. So. What we have been doing, uh, Martin has developed an amazing technology. This is <clears throat> where we have started the company, uh, a modular arm. If you look into raspberries, they grow in bushes. These bushes need to be sustained by wires. If you try to go there with any robotic arm, you'll start breaking these wires. And if you start breaking the wires, I guarantee you, because we have been told that, you are going to be escorted out of the facilities. Because in fact, you are not helping the grower, you are causing more problems to the grower. You are placing 60 meters of crop at risk at any time. So this arm is amazing. You go there, if by any chance you get stuck in a wire, the robot will try to recover. If you can't recover, it will pass a message to the operator. And without this, it's very hard to do. Gripper, well, we, we have spent a lot of time trying to develop this. Um, we tried fingers, the fingers could harvest, but the wires got in the middle. You try to push, the berry goes off, you can't sell it. So. Uh, a lot of issues. We have now found a solution that works really well. We apply the right pressure within um, on the on the surface of the berry. We can unplug it without any damage, and the fruit is not bruised and therefore can be sold in the supermarkets. <coughs> Vision AI. Well, this is important. Unlike a factory where everything grows from A to Z, as you were saying, here you don't know where A is. You know where the Z is. You need you know where you need to place it but you have no idea where you need to pick it. So you need to rely on sensors, cameras, you have a lot of noise. So you need to be able to develop something that reduces the noise and support you on finding the right targets. How do you approach the targets without causing any damage? Is autonomous? Well, this is a big thing. If you start having, I don't know, um, 10 pounds per string or per tunnel, if you go to a farm with 120 hectares, like the one we are working, very easily they scale up into a couple of hundreds. And if you ask the grower, well, are you able to install these and still buy the robots or buy the services from us? They will say, well, uh, I don't have the money at the moment. So I'm having a big issue trying to, to find the harvesters. And maybe I have to pay them a lot of money for them to be able to harvest my crop. Also, everything is uh, low cost. We have spent a lot of time and money on simulators as well, but we do um, co-development. So what, whatever we learn, we put in the simulator and we, we use it for further development. Um, terms of timeline, well, this came out of uh, Martin's lab in 2015. I started to work with Martin in 2016 when everybody had to operate in a very dark environment. So we were able to see the berry. Uh, but since then, we were able to convince uh, the whole Enter Partnership, now the Summer Berry Company, they, they said, well, if you are able to achieve these costs, then we are very interested because this is a big problem. We then went for grants, which we got. We did field trials. We kept developing the technology and we signed a, a collaboration agreement with Bosch. So Bosch came in, very helpful, a lot of experience. They support us on speeding up the development and we kept going and we got more funds. Uh, we grew the team. We are 16, as you can see here. And yeah, at the moment we have started, uh, we have just done part of our fundraising. The aim now is to increase the number of robots on the field. 
and start looking to scale up rather than pure development. <clears throat> well, we, I've been asked what the future holds. I have no idea. I can't predict the future, but harvesters will keep having uh, being short because if you look into the salary of an harvester, he earns exactly the same thing if he works in an hotel than if he works in a farm. And I can guarantee you from being in the farms that is not the most pleasant environment. You work there 30 something degrees all day. Uh, you need to comply with the quotas, otherwise you can't work there. Um, the, the berries have, or the bushes have thorns, so you can expect your arms to be completely ripped um, by the end of the day. And I find, um, well, kind of amusing when I hear comments saying, oh, you are stealing jobs. Um, it, 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 I would like to invite the people that do this, those comments to speak with the growers because they would see we are not stealing jobs because nobody wants to do it. And even the people that want to do it, if you look at them in the end of the day, you probably would cry. So <clears throat> um, another problem, the growers are facing a huge challenge at the moment. Uh, we have learned that the substrate cost has increased uh, twofold, uh, which means the raw, the raw material is going up. You end up spending a lot of money to grow raspberries. And in the end of the day, 50% of the cost is on harvesting, which means whatever happened on the raw materials, if you can't harvest, you'll have a massive impact in the end of the day as a business. And are you going to be able to be here in the next five years without robots? Probably not. And yeah, the main message is either we are able to reduce the costs and harvest the crop, or the, the growers will have to shut down doors. And this will have a knock-on effect on the price of food because we'll have less people doing the same demand and therefore uh, the price will go up as per the demands. Uh, of a curve. The bull prediction is, well, we are already uh, in operation, so we are selling berries. Now, the, the main question is, unfortunately, the financial market is going through a turmoil. Uh, I think that is our biggest risk at the moment. Uh, but if we're able to keep raising the funds we need, we'll see more of these robots uh, coming into the market. We have demand. So some of the growers are considering to invest on us. And there is a, a very big grower that is very interesting because nobody else can do this. So the raspberries give us our own moats and our own protections, which is very helpful. <clears throat>